we now come to the concept of solubility solubility it's our common experience that if i have a glass of water and i start adding sugar to it okay what happens till a point till a point i'll be able to dissolve the sugar beyond a point i'll not be able to dissolve the sugar so there is a maximum limit to which i can add sugar to a glass of water and by glass of water i mean a specific volume of water that may be say for a standard glass somewhere around 250 ml fine now you must have also experienced that if you take ice cold water or you take take water straight out of the fridge and then you try to dissolve the sugar in it it is difficult for the sugar to get dissolved okay why that we'll discuss later but right now you just try to understand this that if we take out a, 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 a water uh, if we take out a glass of water at lower temperature the amount of sugar that you will be able to dissolve into it is less so so this thing and, and what do you call that solution when when it can dissolve no more no more no more of the solute it is called a saturated solution fine so what are we trying to define here is the amount of solute that you the maximum amount of solute that you can dissolve in a given amount of solvent at a given temperature that is called solubility now you should be clear about certain things if i say in a given amount then what will happen suppose i have one glass of water and it it is able to dissolve three tablespoon full of sugar then if i have two glasses of water what happens it will be able to dissolve six tablespoon fulls of sugar and if i have 10 such glasses then 30 now it will be defunct this this definition will be defunct so i have to take it sort of per unit volume isn't it only then it will be of some use to me why otherwise it will keep on varying so two things have to be done my volume has to be fixed my temperature has to be fixed the solvent has to be defined and the solute has to be defined why because depending on on the nature of the solute and solvent the solubility changes for example the same sugar if you try to dissolve in kerosene oil it won't dissolve okay it won't dissolve so so for a given solute and the solvent at a given temperature at a given volume whatever is the maximum you can dissolve that will be called the solubility of that okay so so the maximum amount of amount of solute that can be dissolved that can be dissolved in a specified amount of and that specified amount will we'll see what it is specified amount of of solvent at a given temperature the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved in a specified amount of solvent at a given temperature is called solubility of that solvent in that particular 
of that sorry sorry solubility of that solute in that particular solvent so it is not solute specific it is also solvent specific fine fine so solubility obviously depends on depends on the nature of solute second nature of solvent and temperature that is very important and temperature okay <coughs> now what i do is we discuss the solubility of a solid in a liquid solubility of a solid in a liquid solubility of a solid in a liquid so what happens what happens certain certain solids say sugar okay sugar dissolves in in water but doesn't dissolve in in kerosene oil okay <coughs> same with salt the same thing happens with salt okay now naphthalene naphthalene you have seen it dissolves in benzene but doesn't dissolve in water so normally okay so normally a solute dissolves in a solvent which has the same atomic interactions which has the same molecular interactions as the as the solute so in such dissolution so in this kind of dissolution we say that the like dissolves the like okay does we say that means the molecule to molecule attraction of the solute should be of the same kind as it is with the solvents then only it is able to break it okay so so here does like dissolves like i'll i'll give you an example for example water is a polar solvent okay then it will dissolve polar solids okay the non polar solids will not be able to dissolve the non polar the benzene is a non polar solvent okay so it will dissolve the non polar solutes 
fine. Now, what happens if you put a solid inside a solvent? If, if I put a solid and try to stir it, what happens? Gradually, gradually the molecules of the solute, they start moving into the solvent and the concentration of solute in solvent starts going up. Correct? This process of the solute passing on to the solvent, into the solvent is called dissolution. You are dissolving it, right? Dissolution is the non form of, uh, noun of the verb dissolve, that is all. Okay? So, so as we, as we put, as we put a solute into a solvent, the concentration the, the solute molecules molecules pass into the solvent into the solvent and its concentration concentration I am writing like that you people write the full form concentration in the solvent increases. This process is called dissolution. Dissolution. 